Hey, I'm Nick Hawks with the Gristle King, and I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about why helium is so important and really why you should pay attention to it. Now, I know a lot of the stuff we do in the workshop is kind of making helium and building helium deployments and putting up antennas and messing with that, but I wanted to step back and take a look at strategy and the big picture. Why are we all doing this, right? You might say, oh, we're doing it to earn HNT or whatever it is, but if you think about this in the very big picture, helium is just a part of a much a larger ecosystem called IoT, or Internet of Things. Helium is this thing that allows us to build part of the Internet of Things. Now, what is the IoT? What is the Internet of Things? It's a lot of things, but basically it's machine-to-machine -machine communication. So you might ask, what is that? Uh, if we think about it, it happens all the time all around us. When you call for an Uber, you talk to your phone, to the first machine, and you tell the phone what you want. You want to go from one place to another. The phone does some thinking on its own, and then it puts a call out to Uber's server and says, hey, I've got a person that wants to go from here to here. What do you have? An Uber server thinks a bit, and then it goes to all the cars it's got, and it goes to another machine. All those machines are talking to each other. You're not talking to a taxi cab service. You're not calling up on the phone and saying, hey, I'm Nick, and I'm at whatever this address, and I want to go to that address. All of that is machines talking to each other. Machine talking to each other, is that's the IoT. That's what it is. So it's all around us, we already all use it. When you may have seen it before with Helium, you might have seen stuff like, oh, we're gonna take this sensor that is measuring um, temperature or humidity or how much sun is hitting something or how many people walk in front of the door, any one of a number of different sensors and we're gonna provision it on the network and then the network is going to you know, tell us what we're gonna do. With it. Like That is what's coming. That's not what's here right now for the regular person. The regular person deals, or the common person deals with IoT in the sense of use your phone, you book a ticket on a flight. Um, you're not calling up a, a flight agent or a travel agent saying, hey, I wanna go from here to here. Everything you do is you talk to one machine, that machine talks to sometimes hundreds of other machines um, throughout your journey, not just the one time when you book the ticket. So it's not just when you um, get your first Uber ride, it's also when you make a stop and you pick up a buddy and that person comes and you split the fare. That's constantly machines talking to each other, talking to each other, that's IoT. So with that as the background, this kind of ubiquitous thing that is, it's all around us, it's always happening, it's happening without really your conscious knowledge. That is the beginning um, of, or sorry, helium is at the beginning of what that is a part of, right? So this, think of it this way. It's as if there is an enormous tsunami way out in the middle of the ocean, right? The giant earthquake just happened and this is all, you know, not, not in kind of real time. It's not a tsunami moving at 500 miles an hour. Um, but it is a tsunami in the middle of the ocean. If you were on a boat in the middle of the ocean just floating along and the tsunami passed under you because there's miles of ocean water under you and that hasn't compressed and stood up a wave yet, you wouldn't notice it. And that's a lot like what's happening right now is we look around and we don't notice the tsunami that's coming in the form of all of these different information systems talking to each other. All right, so it's just this thing way out beyond our kind of current senses uh, for most people, that's just, it's moving at breakneck speed. It's coming at 500 miles an hour, but it's really hard to see right now. And that's kind of the exciting thing about helium, is helium allows you to kind of peek a little bit behind the IoT curtain and see and really participate in what's going on. So it's no longer a giant corporation, not the giant corporations are bad, but it's no longer a giant corporation kind of managing industrial level internet of things. So all the things in a giant warehouse or a factory, the rest of it, it's you or me starting to figure out, hey, I can take this sensor and put it in this piece of ground and measure the pH of that soil or how much sun is hitting that soil. Or as a small business owner, I run a cookie company with my wife, we can count how many people walk in front of our store on Main Street versus how many people come into the store. And we can um, change our advertising or marketing based on that. And so Helium is allowing us, you and me and, and whoever wants to participate, to get our hands dirty with IoT, to get in the mix, to figure out what's going on and to be ahead of that giant wave. Because that giant wave is coming, that tsunami is coming, right? We, the world is not gonna become less connected in the years to come, it's gonna become more and more connected. So our goal with Helium is temporarily and short term, like, hey, let's put these deployments up, let's figure out the best way to optimize them, let's earn the most HNT just for proving that we are where we say we are. That's awesome, that's rad, it's been great for me. I'm sure it'll be good for you if you're deploying a, a miner. But the big picture, the giant picture, the thing that you should be super pumped on is A, that you heard about this thing and you're able to participate in it and you're able to, to be a part of it while it's still really young and small and understandable and manageable. And B, 
that you found this thing at a time that gives you a giant head start over all the people who don't know what the IoT is, who don't understand the implications of it. And maybe it's a good time to talk about the implications of IoT. So what does it mean if we start to have a world that is 10 times as connected as we are today, right? Maybe you've got a video doorbell or you've got whatever, you're monitoring your baby crying or whatever it is, right? That is just the tip of the iceberg. We are beginning to, to develop as humans, as humans participating in a technological world, we are beginning to develop a brand new sense, right? Just like we have sight and sense and touch and hearing, this new sense is our ability to see a world at, at a scale we never could have seen before. So where before, in fact, this hasn't happened in 10,000 years. So if you go back 10,000 years and you look at hunter-gatherers, they had this really direct, really deep connection with the world around them, right? They had a much deeper connection with the natural world around them than we do. What we are beginning to have is we're being to reconnect with that world around us in a brand new way, in a digital way, which is pretty cool, right? There's nothing new to stop it. You might as well go along with it and explore it and figure out how best to use it. So this new digital way is that instead of you having to walk um, paths and walk the forest, you know, trails and, and be kind of in nature in just one place, you can be and participate and sense and pick up on and read nature all over the world at a, at a distributed level, at a scalar level, right? So you can see what's happening in Thailand just as easy as you can see what's happening next door if the sensors begin to be deployed and distributed. So that's the super exciting thing about IoT is it is allowing us, allowing us humans to develop a new sense as we start to connect with and learn how to use and work with machines that are talking to other machines. So one example that uh, I'd like to talk about is you think about if you look at a tree right now, how do you measure the temperature of a tree, right? I have a temperature, you have a temperature, you can measure it with your mouth, you measure it with your ear, other places. How do you measure the temp temperature of a tree? Well, you can put a little thermometer on the trunk or maybe on the branch, but there'll be different things. IoT and this kind of giant scalar deployment of sensors allows us to measure temperature throughout that tree. And we start to see, we be, we're starting to be able to see brand new things that we never could have seen before. If you see that the tree is moving sap around itself in ways we couldn't have imagined, we couldn't have tracked before. And that's the really exciting thing about the world that we're entering into and the world that you and I are entering into is, as part of this whole helium kind of microsystem that's part of the larger macro system of IoT in general, is we are able to explore that stuff and able to practice with that stuff and to experiment and to see what works, what works for you, what works for me, what works for my business, what works for your business. Um, this is a, it's a super exciting time to be alive. So with that said, what, what can you do with it, right? If you know that this thing is coming and you're already participating in it, you're already getting the gravy of HNT coming in just for having your miner up, that's rad, keep doing that. Is It is time now to start to stretch your imagination and see what it is that you might be able to do, right? If you had more senses, if you had some new dimension that you could be a part of, if you could read certain environments and new environments in different ways, what would you want to know? What would you want to do? What would you want to build? What kind of information would you want to transmit or share or maybe keep secret? All of these things are available to you and now is the time to, to dig in and to use your imagination and to use Helium as the vehicle that you can kind of test the waters in and play it pretty safe and get rewarded for becoming a part of this pretty radical new world. That's why I'm excited about Helium. If you've got anything extra, put it in there. I'd love to hear about it, but uh, super pumped on Helium. Glad you're along for the ride. Nick Cox, The Grift King, out of here.